bent on dinking with some wiring here. Still deleting wires. See how much snow's in the bus. <laughs> well, that's not good. Metal coming off the side there. I'll have to tack that back in place. Having all kinds of fun trying to keep the weather out of the bus. And it looks like a winter wonderland in here. Yeah, this snow squall's not treating us very well. So, oh well. We'll just have to watch our footing. So it's quite a sloppy, snowy, sleety day here in western Pennsylvania. And I'm going to be working outside of the bus at the electrical panel. And actually what I'm going to do is use magnets to hold up a tarp uh, over my work area. Uh, hopefully that uh, temporary shelter will keep me from getting soaked in cold while I'm deleting wires. So. Uh, yesterday I took the wiring harnesses that I clipped, having labeled them in the bus at the ends. It was a rat's nest of wires. I took that back to my house and carefully separated all those wires, labeled things, and got it clipped back to uh, a much shorter uh, connector end that I can work from easily at the box to figure out what's what. And uh, between that and the wiring grams that are at the box and in my manuals, my PDF manuals for the bus. Uh, that's another thing about Thomas Bus. The customer service has been very helpful in giving me uh, digital copies of the manuals uh, for my particular bus. So that's extremely helpful. And uh, there was no cost, which was also helpful. So uh, we're just about at the bus here and uh, we'll get started working on uh, deleting wiring at that electrical box under the driver window. Okay, so I've used some clear plastic actually, supported a uh, with some cheap rare earth magnets and a little bit of bungee cord that'll let the light in so I can work in there and keep the rain out while I'm deleting wires so uh, anyhow I'm gonna get at it okay so this is called fun with wires I'm trying to uh, just make sure that I have everything figured out all the way back into the box Anything important, I'm going to re-splice. I've got this fairly well cleaned up. Actually, you can see that this part here was what's left of the whole loom. I've labeled individual wires based on what they were connected to. And then I've come back into that connector, snapped this back in place. I'm going to continue labeling down here and validate that the codes on the wires, like this one says, uh, you can see it looks like uh, B17, um, that the codes on the wires match up with the, uh, the drawings in the book or in the manual, as well as my observations, just to make sure that I'm deleting only wires that actually can be deleted. So that's the agenda. It's tedious, but uh, you know, in the end, I'll know that I don't have any uh, old wiring creating hazards. So that's what I'm up to. All right, so I am sitting inside the bus. It's a fairly pleasant day for the month of January here. It's at least 40 something outside, so not too cold, but uh, still having fun with wiring. Um, off of Amazon, I got a dyno label maker with a couple reels of label tape. The review said that the, uh, the labels wouldn't stick to stuff, so I just got some packing tape to protect them anyway. But 
Um, trying to right now isolate the uh, rear signals. I cut the loom after labeling things and sorting through it and kind of trace things back. Uh, a bit of a tedious process because there's just so many wires as you can see. Kind of a rat's nest and this is after I cut 30 some feet of uh, wiring out of the loom. I labeled the ends but I'm also going to the schematics to double check everything. Um, I figured out that uh, the wires on this Thomas bus, they might say something like B10. Uh, the B, I don't know if that means back or is irrelevant or whatever, but uh, the 10 the important part on the computer printed wire labels that shows up on the schematic. Um, but uh, yeah, trying to be meticulous about it, make sure that, uh, you know, I can fix the, uh, the uh, start interrupt from the emergency doors and... Uh, reconnect tail lights and stop lights and turn signals and clearance lights and marker lights etc but uh, yeah I've uh, had a bit of a pause here just because the weather's been cold uh, with the uh, windows out of the bus and lots of air gaps there's no real way to keep it warm in here so uh, you know it uh, the weather may slow progress but uh, we'll keep at it All right now we're finishing up wiring hopefully uh, and then I'll try to get the bus restarted so um, I'll do some more clips on how I did that once I get, uh, get it figured out, but it should be a matter of grounding. I think grounding this blue wire, uh, I believe that's what I need to do. And I was pulling it back. I actually tied it in knots as I cut different wires just to make sure I didn't lose track of which one was the emergency door, um, starting an interrupt wire, closed contact wire. So anyhow, um, Back at it here, labeling wires. Okay, so I got the engine started here. I just had to ground wire number 29. I don't know if I'll be audible here, so I'll repeat myself in a minute. Alright, so I grounded wire number 29. The buzzer was actually going prior to um, prior to all this electrical work. I'm not sure why. Something to do with the mechanical uh, stuff they had done in the back. I don't know. I have to figure that out separately. But basically, I uh, I took this blue wire right here, number 29 for the emergency door. And I grounded it to that little lug right there. That screw. And uh, then I went in and started the bus and it fired right up. So that's progress. Okay, so uh, what I did is I cleaned everything up. I got it labeled. These are airlines that go up to the, uh, to the uh, uh, door to control the door opening and closing. These lines... Those wires there go to the stoplight, which I have not yet removed. So, but other than that, the main wiring harness is removed. I've got the uh, label connectors here from inside the side box. You know, this one here is the left turn signal wire and side marker. I've got them labeled here. I've got the gauge. I've got it labeled with the circuit number what it does left turn and the color of the wire so and then I've got these connectors labeled this is connector D labeled for the uh, snap fittings inside of the box back there so anyhow um, started right up once I grounded that one wire that was the first thing I did so uh, I appreciate other people making videos because it made it simpler for me to know what to do so and that buzzing noise like I said is actually it was actually buzzing when my mechanic brought the bus back I do not know what it is um, I don't know if pressure is still building here on the air but it buzzed the whole time he was driving it over here and we're not sure what it was but uh, I'll figure it out eventually where's the air uh, 
Oh, here's the... Is that the air gauge? See the warning indicators there, but I just don't know what for. Looks like the pressure is just fine, and I did hear the compressor cut out, so that's not a low air buzzer. So, just not quite sure what it is. It is the same buzzer that buzzes for the emergency doors. Uh, so, I don't know if maybe I need to remove a wire or something to get it to stop. Uh, I'll have to do a little homework on that. So, anyway, that's where we're at. Okay, so uh, what I'm doing right here is there was a yellow warning light that was staying on here, or still is, I would imagine, once I start the bus, but right here in the top left corner. This is called the pilot, uh, the pilot gauge, or basically it's where the bus engine gives you warnings or red light that says shut down. It's tied into the engine control module. Um, so this is the first time I'm going to try to read a diagnostic code. Uh, using the flashers there. So uh, in this manual here for the Cummins ISC engine, uh, it's telling me how to how to do this. Uh, this is the engine diagnostic test switch, which I'm going to put in the on position. Um, so what I'm going to do is I got to get my key here. All right. So that's the on position. Um, that buzzer, I believe, is still tied to what's going on with the school bus doors. Um, you've got to sort that out a little bit. Uh, so, actually, that might just be the wait to start buzzer, actually. But uh, what we're going to do, we're going to flip this to on. Okay. And then when we turn the key to the on position, not starting the bus, but to the on position, we should get lights appearing here. All right, so there's a warning indicator, two, three, four. So that's a four, one, two, three, one, two, three. So I think that's four, three, three. So we're gonna see if it's four, three, 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 four, one, two, three. One, two, three. So I'm going to read that as 433 is the diagnostic code. So that was 145. Okay, so that's a 433 is one code. Looks like it repeats each code like two times. That's a one. That's a four. Okay, that's five. So I'm going to turn the key back off here, flip that uh, diagnostic switch again, and then I'll look up those two codes of 145 and 433 that were flashing and figure out what those are. Okay, so what I figured out was that uh, one of those codes uh, is for the intake manifold pressure, um, shorted low, 
And then another code is relative to the cooling sensor shorted low. I know that I was, I'm suspecting the turbo may, may not be putting out uh, adequate pressure. I got to check into that, but uh, um, I think when the, the replacement engine was put in, uh, that possibly not all the sensors were connected uh, or something along those lines. Uh, I'm not driving it right now, so I think I'm going to just wait and address those when I tackle the, the whole issue of uh, the gauges and sensors and so on and so forth. Um, certainly before driving it, I'll have all that in uh, good order, um, but it's not uh, not urgent. So the yellow warning lamp was, uh, you know, it seems fairly fairly minor. Um, next time I run the bus, I'll make sure the temperature gauge actually works. Uh, I think from memory it did when I started it for a few minutes before, but uh, um, yeah, nothing I have to address right now. So, but uh, that procedure uh, is how you check the fault codes on the Cummins ISC with its engine control module. So um, that's good information. That's it.